Two for Toledo. So a 6-6 deadlock. Once again, fans, if you're new to the game, we play 20-minute periods in overtime until somebody wins. No shootouts, no ties. So either we will go back to Wheeling for Game 7 on Tuesday or the Storm will win the Riley Cup in overtime. All right, this is Jeff Lanzi live in the uh, 13 newsroom. The Toledo Storm and the Wheeling Thunderbirds right now, they are be about to begin the uh, second overtime. Game tied at 6. We are going to pick up WTOV NBC out of Wheeling Steubenville with their live feed. They are our sister station. We are going to take care, uh, listen to their uh, live feed back to Wheeling right now. Down to the sports arena live, the Storm and the Wheeling Thunderbird in double overtime tied at six. Schwartz chases down. It comes in front of King. A backhander by Schwartz's block. Schwartz chases down as he is put around by Booth. Tisdale knocked down by Alex Roberts who picks it up. Roberts the center. Dunk it. To Roberts, back to Duncan. Roberts, a pass in front. Here's a shot score. Thank you, Jeff. Congratulations. Thank you. 
Thank you. We've got a great goal today. Thank you. Right. Jeff Jablonski and his brother Pat plays for the Tampa Bay Lightning, but this had to be a very special moment for the Jablonski family. His father was a player back in the other older days of hockey. Thank you very much, uh, Bill Weggy, live down at the sports arena, where the Toledo Storm have just won their first ever Riley Cup final, 7-6 in double overtime. So the Storm are the Riley Cup champions, uh, Bill Weggy, down at the uh, sports arena. He'll be there for the uh, next uh, couple of minutes or so. And if we have time, we'll check back in with him. But uh, right now, we go back to our regular program. And again, the Storm win the Riley Cup tonight by a final of 7-6 in double overtime. We are going to go back to Bill now. I'm just told Bill. Back to you now, live at the sports arena. Alex, thanks for joining me live. Alex, what's this mean to you? Uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, we worked so hard for it all year, and it all paid off. You know, we, we got shut down a little bit, and they came back and scored, and we just kept working. That's the story of our year. You know, we're just a bunch of hardworking guys, and couldn't end any better for us. What do you say about Scott King tonight? The guy's unbelievable. I don't know why he's retiring. You know, he's got a future in this game. You know, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't even be close to this far. You know, I, my hat's off to him. He played a hell of a series. And what's up for you now? Well, I'm just going to go back home, uh, getting, getting married in a month. Uh-oh. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. uh, you know, just hope, hope I get a contract for next year. If not, who knows, maybe I'll be back in Toledo next year. Yeah, you got to be loving Toledo, Ohio right about now. Not a bad place to oh, be. Oh, it's great. I love this place. The fans are great. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Number one, baby. Jeff, I like the photo. Mark Deasley is over here. If we can get him, he's obviously the hero. All right. While we uh, try to get another player over here to you, we have the game-winning goal, which was scored by Mark Deasley in the double overtime, early in the double overtime. So let's show that to you one more time. As it was really looking <laughs> it couldn't be any better than this. <laughs> to a couple of fans here. What, what do you think of your Toledo Storm? Hell of a team. Hell of a team. We're glad they're back in Toledo in hockey. What do you think of the game today? It was a tough one, but they played like hell. They played their heart out tonight. We love them. We love them here. Toledo's got a champion. They're great. They're great. What do you think of this? Main song? Street 2. You can't beat it. Sports Arena. Storm wins seven to six in double overtime. Jeff, I'm gonna go dry off. <laughs> we'll go back to you. <laughs> All right, Bill. Thanks about. I did. I warned you about the champagne. I knew it would come out. Of course, you're going to the locker room, and I know you'll see much more champagne in there. The Storm, the Riley Cup champions, will have much more for you tomorrow morning in our early uh, newscast again at noon, six and eleven tomorrow. Toledo Storm, Riley Cup champions. Congratulations to Chris McSorley, the entire crew. Again, much more for you tomorrow. Right now, that's it. From the News Center, I'm Jeff Blanzy reporting live. Served him photographing you. How did Farmer Spur? Questions, Your Honor.
And plenty of activity outside the cult compound in Waco, Texas. Federal authorities appear to be making their move to end the siege. We'll have a live report. And the Toledo Storm were big winners at the sports arena last night. They beat Wheeling to take the Riley Cup championship. We'll have highlights. Please stay tuned. The news is next. Well, they had to go into two overtimes to do it. But the Toledo Storm won the ECHL's Riley Cup early this morning. Mark Deasley's goal, 40 seconds into the second extra period, gave the Storm a 7-6 win over Wheeling. Toledo taking the series four games to two. The Storm led by a couple of goals midway in the third period, but the T-Birds strike here on a power play. Devin Edgerton beating Scott King. It's tied 6-all with three minutes left in regulation. It stayed tied through nearly 24 minutes of play. The second OT was just underway when the Storm attacked Wheeling's net. Easily's backhander lighting the lamp. And the celebration was underway. The Storm wins the league title. Toledo 11's Dan Cummins enjoyed the moment last night with Storm coach Chris McSorley. You must be exhausted. I know you looked really intense the whole night. It's been a tough series for you. You've been really through the ringer. Been through the ringer, the, wa the rinse cycle, the double wash. What can I say? I'm, I just want to give TOL a great deal of thanks for the support they've given us all year and the coaches show. And, with all your help, I don't doubt if we'd always have 5,000 faithful here, but it's been a great group effort on anyone, and God bless everybody. And I don't know what to say, but I think I'm going to take a week here and try to keep things going pretty good. Somebody get some first aid. <laughs> of course, the fans at last night's Storm game were crazy all night long. Greg Lindemolder shows us what makes a Storm fan tick. There's nothing in the world like a Toledo hockey fan. They're proud, they're loud, and they stick behind their team. Many here who have logged time watching the Hornets and the Gold Diggers are now weathering the storm. It's a whole new generation of fans. I've been out here in the Ted Garvin days, and it's a, it's a great, great scene out here. It's the only way to go. Yeah, I was a Gold Diggers fan when I was these guys' age. It's a game of heart, you know? And that's exciting. And according to those in the know, like 40-year veteran ticket taker Bob Burkle, the storm blows away its predecessors. The storms are more popular than any of them right now. Is that right? Yep, that's it. Some say the capacity crowds here are due to the low ticket price and the fact that, unlike some other sports, women enjoy it just as much as men. Um, I like all the hitting and checking, and I just, the crowd really gets into the games. Season ticket holder. And I got my son and my husband into it. What do you think? That's fine. <laughs> and of course, every good Storm fan finds a creative way to deal with bad calls by the referees. We just got tired of them making funny calls, and my wife, the oddest, decided to drive. I just think they made some unfair calls. All in a day's work for a Storm fan, and even with only two seasons under their belt, they seem just as seasoned as anybody on the ice. Yeah. Greg Lindemolder. Toledo 11 News. Way to go, Storm. Well, there may be a different kind of storm moving into our area. The weather type, not hockey. Dave Carlson is in with details right after this. People who eat sweets take up two seats. <laughs> Not the diet or special there. Well, there you as you mentioned earlier, how about that storm, huh? They had to go into two overtimes, but the Toledo Storm won the ECHL's Riley Cup. Mark Deasley's goal, 40 seconds into the second extra period, gave the storm a 7-6 win over Wheeling. Toledo taking the series four games to two. Now, the storm led by a couple of goals midway third period, but the T-Birds hit on a power play here. Devin Edgerton beating Scott King. It's tied 6-all with three minutes left in regulation and stayed tied through nearly 24 minutes of play. The second overtime just underway when the Storm attacked Wheeling's net. Deasley's backhander lighting the lamp and the celebration underway. The Storm just an expansion team one year ago winning the league title. Toledo 11's Dan Cummins right there with Storm coach Chris McSorley. Did you even see the winning goal at all? Yeah, I did. <laughs> but then I was too busy. Had Scott, I think my, my trainer and I were necking on the bench. So here, wait one second. Toledo? Thanks to everybody. This is what it's all about. Have a little sit there, Cummins. 
Is that beautiful? Tastes great. Tastes great. <laughs> Let's hope it's a little more filling. Have a bath in it. <laughs> no Dan. wonder it didn't wear a coat and tie yesterday. <laughs> Dan thought the cup was too small. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Let's take a look at what's happening on Wall Street this noon hour. Dow Jones. It was a great weekend. Our producer, Terry Steiger, says he played softball and won. Mm -hmm. We had a very successful arthritis uh, telethon, and you yep. did a great job on that. Thanks. And then there was the hockey team. Yeah. That had a tremendous weekend. Kind of put the perfect ending to a great weekend, <laughs> huh? <laughs> You're right. Yeah, it was pretty special down at the sports arena last night, Dan. Dan? Did I call you Dan? Don. I you know who you want me are. to write it down <laughs> for you? <laughs> Hi, everybody. For the first time in nearly a decade, Toledo hockey fans are celebrating a championship. Last night's overtime victory pushed the storm past Wheeling in the O'Reilly Cup Finals four games to two. The visiting Thunderbirds nearly put a damper on the Sunday night party, trying to fight back from the brink of elimination. They scored the first two goals of the game and quieted the crowd of 5,316 fans. But it was the storm that battled back. Late in the first period, Jeff Jablonski scores on the power play, his third of the postseason, and that sets the stage for Toledo's big second period. Ian Duncan, who struggled early in this series, shows his MVP form with a pair of markers less than four minutes apart. This one knocks the score. Moments later, he put the storm out in front. Toledo then breaks away from a three-all tie. Greg Pahulski with his 12th of the playoffs, then Derek Booth fires home his seventh. Wheeling answered, and so the third period opened with the Storm holding a slim one-goal advantage. Midway through the third, Rick Judson, the pride of Bedford High School, pokes home a rebound, notching his biggest goal of the season. Once again, Toledo enjoying a two-goal cushion. But late in the game, the T-Birds score, then catch Derek Booth playing with an illegal stick, creating a five-on-three advantage. Forty-three seconds later, Devin Edgerton beats Scott King, sending the game into overtime and setting the stage for Mark Deasley's historic goal in double overtime. All that happened is I just went to the front of the net where I usually stand. And the puck, the puck, I think there was a two-on-two two in the corner, and the puck came out in front of the net, and I just shot it right along the ice, and I think it went right through the goalie's legs, and thank God it did. At that point, what had been a totally unpredictable night became very predictable. Confetti and crepe paper showered the ice, hugs, and yes, even kisses exchanged by some of the players. And finally, many in the crowd poured onto the ice to join in the celebration. And Rick Judson of Temperance, Michigan, was presented the Most Valuable Player Award. Just winning the cup, you know, first of all, is the biggest, you know, thrill of my life. And the MVP is just the biggest bonus of my life, you know, being from this area, winning the cup, you know, for the first time since the Diggers in a while. I've been here, I was here the last time they won it. And winning the cup today is just a curious feeling. And then, what all the fans had been waiting for, the presentation of the Riley Cup. Last year, a great Toledo team was ousted in the opening round of the playoffs. But that disappointment, now a distant memory. Scott King, who shut out the T-Birds in overtime, ends his playing career on top. There's a lot of pressure there. We, we didn't want to go back to Wheeling for the seventh game. Uh, it'll give them momentum, and uh, I just... Uh, you know something, my dad won the Turner Cup here, now I won the Riley Cup here, so it feels great. Woohoo! Sweet Ginger Brown! As a player, I wouldn't know. I've been here twice, twice and got a couple sniffs at her, but big interest in getting a sniff at it and getting a chance to really enjoy it. God bless Toledo, and I'll see you guys next year, if I ever dry out. Just a footnote to the season, I want to pass along a word of thanks to NWO videographer John Potter for a great night of shooting, and a special thanks to Dennis Robideau, who shot a lot of the video, which we showed you throughout the year. Well, the storm will be honored with a noontime victory parade tomorrow in downtown Toledo. The parade will begin at Monroe and Summit, turn left onto Jackson, and end at the Government Center. There, Mayor John McHugh will present a proclamation to the newly crowned Riley Cup champ. The Boston Red Sox with a record of 10. Cast is brought to you by your local Lincoln Mercury dealers. Well, the celebration continues today mm -hmm. for the storm. Got a blow dryer, got my hair back to normal. I was a little <laughs> wet a little last night. damp, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> it was exciting last yeah. night at the Sports Arena for the Riley Cup Championship. It was like a couple of heavyweight boxers slugging it out for 15 rounds, and they said, hey, go a couple more. Score was tied 6-6. We're going to a second overtime, and Coach Chris McSorley was getting a little nervous, wondering if they could end this thing or would they have to go back to Wheeling Well. Mark Deasley gets it done 40 seconds into the double overtime. The Storm wins 7 to 6. They are the Riley Cup champions.
There's Coach McSorley on the bench. The place just went wild for several minutes as the fans and the players all celebrate the Riley Cup title, the first professional hockey title in Toledo in 10 years. There's Jeff Jablonski and all the others. And where was Coach McSorley? Well, there he is. <laughs> and uh, right now, we're going to go to him. Where is he now? <laughs> well, he joins us in the news there. Uh, congratulations to you, Chris. Uh, congratulations. Thank you very much, Phil. It's, uh, just say it's, it's our cup, Toledo. The 5,000 faithful that showed up every game and staff and management that made it possible and the 17 players that threw their hearts on the ice every night. This is, this is Toledo's cup and hopefully all you guys can come down to the Consol Tavern tonight and enjoy it with us, guys. Uh, is, that, is that where you're going to be? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's where we haven't, haven't left yet. Uh, that's, that's what I've heard. Uh, what does this mean to you as a coach? Uh, it's, I don't know. I just, it's more of a sense of relief right now just to have a chance to get it done and to quit having my owner big in my ear but where's my ring but uh -huh. this is your ring barry now uh -huh. i can say for the next month where's my ring <laughs> all right we've got oh uh, yes that's right we've got one of your players standing by right now a man who really helped make this possible as we go down to the east side to their favorite watering hole ian duncan congratulations hey. to you how you doing what's it mean to you you've won for bowling green a championship now you've won for toledo a championship oh uh, you know it's just great to bring a championship to toledo i uh helped bring one to uh, bowling green but uh this is more satisfying because it's a uh, professional uh championship championship and got a great bunch of guys here and uh it's just a great year and what do you say to coach mcsorley <laughs> what do i say to him mm -hmm. Easy. bring that cup back because i've had it all day and i'm gonna babysit it all night too. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see you in a dry shirt <laughs> uh, i know uh, chris congratulations to you there'll be a parade tomorrow we look forward to seeing you there and uh, celebrating for another day before you head off to where nashville to do what uh, i just just heading off to nashville for the summer trying to get a little r and r in so right. trying to enjoy what we've Try to enjoy what we've accomplished, Bill. Congratulations. You've been a great season. Really enjoyed following you. Thank you. All right. Coach Chris McSorley, live in our newsroom tonight with the hardware. All right. The team will be honored tomorrow with a noontime parade. It will start at the corner of Monroe and Summit, head up to Jackson Street, over to the Government Center at 1215, where the mayor will pro proclaim the day as Toledo Storm Day tomorrow. Now for the latest on Joe Montana. Toledo this noon for a victory celebration. The parade will be headed to Government Center. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. The big victory parade is about to get underway for the Toledo Storm hockey team to celebrate their Riley Cup championship. We will have complete coverage in just a minute. But first, we want to update you quickly on the latest situation in Texas. Where the local cold, cold situation, it is time to change our focus to the big local story this noon. It is a bit stormy in downtown Toledo, and that is much to the delight of hockey fans. Toledo Mayor John McHugh has declared today Storm Day in the city. Members of the Storm team are riding through downtown this noon in a parade. Dan Cummins and Dave Carlson are both out along the parade route live this noon. Dan and Dave, how are things shaping up? Well, Dave, I'll, I'll lead off. But first of all, about 10 minutes ago, we're getting bright sunshine here around Portside. And you were getting rain over there? Uh, not only 10 minutes ago were we getting bright sunshine, but yes, now we are getting at least some rain drops coming down over here uh, by Government Center, which is where we are located, which is where the parade is going to finish up. So uh, we are keeping our, we have one dark cloud that's going over us uh, at the moment. So hopefully uh, with this wind blowing, it'll go over us uh, quite quickly and take this rain out of here. So the parade can keep on and coming. So again, uh, we are here uh, where the parade will finish up at the uh, Government Center. Boy, oh, that is a dark cloud up there. So now the sunshine is coming back out. So we'll all keep our fingers crossed here. Well, Dave, things are kind of quiet over here right now. We're looking down the street, and the parade hasn't yet started. Of course, it's not going to be a long parade. They're going just from, uh, of course, from down uh, by the Seagate Center all the way over to the Government Center. So at this point, we don't see a parade, but... Uh, there are a few fans here along the route, and as I can see here down the way, I guess they are starting the parade momentarily. What a great story this has been. You know, the storm was just uh, an idea maybe three years ago. Barry Soskin chose to bring the franchise to Toledo, and uh, he hired Chris McSorley. That was probably the first major step of building a champion. Chris McSorley, a former gold digger, came in here and did a great job building a winning program. Last year, they had the best overall record in the league, and then, of course, uh, this year, they didn't have the best record, the second best record, but they uh, beat Wheeling in the playoffs, a, a double overtime win over Wheeling on Sunday night, the game that went nearly four and a half hours. So, anyway... The Storm winning that big game against Wheeling on Sunday it's night. Up, so don't worry about it. The game winning goal by Mark Deasley, and the celebration began. A packed house, 5,300 fans, the sports arena, and uh, enjoying the moment and the fans uh, out on the floor. And then, of course, the Riley Cup champions drinking champagne out of the glass. 
It was the first championship for Toledo hockey team since the Gold Diggers won the Turner Cup back in 1982 and 1983. They won in consecutive years, and of course, Toledo has gone a long time without hockey. They went uh, the mid-80s all the way up to the early 90s, and finally with hockey returning to Toledo within two years, we have a champion. Again, looking down the street, I can hear the parade starting. We're probably about three minutes away from getting anything here, David. So uh, I guess we'll try to break in momentarily and give you a shot of the parade as it comes by. But of course, I see you have a good crowd down there at the government center. Oh, have we got a good crowd down here. And uh, I want to introduce you to, uh, to one of the younger Sto uh, Toledo Storm fans here. I said, how long have you been following the storm? She said, oh, a long time. How long is that? Two, two years. Two years. Now, uh, what's your name? Jody. Jody, I see you've got all the autographs. Can you turn around here just a second? Look at this, if you can see this. All the, all the autographs from the team on the back of her shirt here. How did you manage to do that? Just now, by going to the, at the end of the games where the players come out of the locker rooms, I get their autographs. Okay. How long, uh, how, what's, who's your favorite player on the, uh, on the team? Well, he it? was hurt during the middle, got hurt during the middle of the season. It was Pat Philippew. Oh, so who's your, who's your favorite player who's still playing? Duncan. Ah, uh, yeah, huh? Hey guys. Ian okay. Duncan. Well, I'm sure he's going to be happy to know he's got a big fan out there. Is this your sister over here? No, this is my friend. Your friend? Does she follow the storm like you do? Yes, she does. How old are you? Seven. Seven? Seven years old and following the Toledo storm for how long? One year. One year? Who's your favorite player? And Duncan. Wow. Oh, you, well, you two have been talking to one another, huh? Well, it's nice to talk to you. Are you very proud of the storm? Yeah. I'll bet we you got are. Huh? That's why you're down here this afternoon. Go Storm! Go Storm, okay. I think they already went, and I think they're on their way down here to Government Center right now. Dan Cummins, back to you at Portside. The parade is coming a little bit by Society Banks. It's moving pretty slowly. We still haven't a good idea how long the entourage is going to be, but then again, I don't know how many cars it takes to put hockey players in there. I can see the Wade High School marching band, the marching Indians coming up the street as well, led by a Toledo PD car. And really a pretty good crowd along here. A good time of day, of course, to have something like this during lunch hour so people were able to come out of their offices and come downstairs street side and watch the proceedings. You know, after the parade is over with, Chris McSorley plans to leave town. He wants to get back to Nashville, and uh, he has things to take care of. Dave Flanagan, who joined the hockey team late in the season, uh, brought down from Adirondack, is going back up to Adirondack immediately. So he'll, of course, be uh, in the playoffs with the Red Wings affiliate. Well, right on cue, the rainstorm hit, if you can tell. high school marching band going by we're right in front of the port side vehicle I see uh, Chris McSorley and the second vehicle some of the storm players Bruce McDonald Greg Pahalski Elaine Harvey now I see where the crowd was they were all down at the starting point for this event and they're all just walking along as we all get to the government center. That vehicle, there you see the, uh, the Riley Cup. Hey, how are you? Wait, have you come down from that high yet? You guys have been on a three-day party. No, it's great. This is the best day, too. All these people come out like this. It's wonderful. What great. are you planning to do for the rest of the day? The rest of the day, uh, we'll probably go out to the lunch, the console, hang out with the boys. Everyone's taking off pretty soon, so we want to get as much to each other as we can before uh, we have to get going. Thanks for coming over. Congratulations. Hey, take care. Get up there. Getting back in the parade now. Come on. Come on. 
So the parade winds down, David, and we'll let you go. And now let's go to you now for more at the Government Center. Well, our, uh, our rain is still managing to come down here. We actually have two storms in downtown Toledo. We have the team also have uh, some rainy weather beginning, I'm sorry to say. Hopefully it's not going to last long. We'll have the uh, complete forecast for you coming up here in just a moment as we broadcast live from Government Center here as the Toledo Storm Victory Parade coming through downtown Toledo. We'll be right back. Dave Carlson's forecast has earned the seal of approval of the American Meteorological Society. Welcome back to a special edition of Toledo 11 News at noon. We continue our live coverage of the Toledo Storm Victory Parade, and we sent Dave Carlson down to Government Center to check out the weather down there as well as the celebration. Dave, how's it going? Uh, Melissa, I can just uh, barely hear you, but we have a very, very, I can say, enthusiastic crowd here. Uh, as the Toledo Storm Victory Parade comes through town here. So I think, uh, well, before they get down here to a government center in the middle of, uh, I can't tell whether this is rain or snowflakes. I think there's even a little bit of hail mixed in with this coming down here. But uh, as far as the weather is concerned, well, let's take a look at our radar map here. And on the radar picture here across uh, a good part of the Northwest Ohio, Southern Michigan viewing area today, we are showing rain. Now, it's just now beginning to come down in the downtown Toledo area here. And this is all part of a larger area of uh, rain that goes from the Ohio Valley all the way down into the Gulf of Mexico and also down into, well, up into northern Michigan, where they're seeing a lot of heavy rain in northern Michigan at the moment. As a matter of fact, they're likely to see a lot of flooding up there. It's all part of one massive uh, system that's going across, uh, well, moving across the Great Lakes area here at the moment. And it's going to continue to do so throughout the uh, afternoon hours and evening hours. So this is going to continue to give us a chance for some showers here throughout the daytime hours today and also into tonight. And there could be some brief pockets of some heavy rains coming through. So outside at the moment, our temperature is 67 degrees. The humidity is 63 percent. Winds are coming out of the south at 17 miles an hour and are gusting up to an including 27 miles an hour. Low last night dropped down to 54 degrees. And coming up in the forecast here for this afternoon, well, we'll look for periods of showers, shall we say, like right now. And temperatures today should be in the mid 60s, although a cold front, I think, is about ready to come through the uh, Plato area. And we can feel temperatures dropping right now as the winds are switched around from the northwest. There is a small craft advisory up on uh, Lake Erie at the moment. And uh, as the afternoon goes on, look for periods of showers. We'll see temperatures uh, in the I think they'll start to fall now. And then a small craft advisory will stay in effect on Lake Erie. Overnight tonight, temperatures in the upper 30s and much colder air coming through with northwesterly winds and temperature highs tomorrow should only be in the upper 40s. And then looking to the conclusion of the work week this week, temperatures remaining in the upper 40s to low 50s with dry weather until we get to about Saturday. And then we'll see uh, some more rain coming through with a temperature high right around 50 degrees. Again, as we broadcast live from in front of Government Center here, here is the Toledo Storm coming through, concluding their victory parade here, winding up, uh, coming from Portside uh, over to Government Center. They are being uh, preceded by the Waite High School Marching Band. And we'll just kind of let you listen to them for just a few seconds here. Once again. Storm coach Chris McSurley. As you can see, the crowd here going, uh, and probably as you can hear, the crowd going absolutely nuts as the coach of the Toledo Storm comes by, shaking hands with, uh, I think, some of the most enthusiastic fans you'll probably encounter. And now the rest of the team coming by, all being very friendly, very enthusiastic and the crowd uh, returning that enthusiasm, enthusiasm just as they did the other night as the Toledo Storm became the ECHL champions. And we cannot tell you the enthusiasm that they are being met with here in uh, downtown Toledo. Uh, you probably can't measure it by listening to that little speaker over your television set, but uh, it is just they are absolutely going crazy down here. And I think the team just as enthusiastic. 
Uh, we're going to uh, take just a couple of seconds here while we regroup to uh, pay a couple of bills here. So we'll be right back in just a few moments. That's right. We'll continue our live coverage of the Toledo Storm Victory Parade. We'll be back after this. Stay with us. Welcome back to a special edition of Toledo 11 News at noon. In case you're just joining us, we have live coverage of the Storm Celebration Party down at Government Center. We go out to Dave Carlson, who is standing by with the latest developments there. Dave? That's right, Melissa, and they are uh, going absolutely crazy here. We have Toledo Storm coach Chris McSurley and Honorable Mayor John McHugh, who would like to give a proclamation to uh, and a very nice, warm welcome to Chris McSurley here. Surely. On behalf of all the citizens of the city of Toledo, we congratulate you, Chris, Barry Soskin, and all the members of Storm Team for what they've done for Toledo and Northwest Ohio. We want to congratulate you, and it's a great day. It's a storm day in the city of Toledo. Congratulations. You, yes. Man. We have for you, just in case, a Toledo hat, along with, there it is, our goblet. And our proclamation from all of us in the city of Toledo, Toledo Storm Day here, uh, April 20th, 1990, Toledo Storm Day in the city of Toledo, and commend Chris McSorley and all the members of the Storm Team for their outstanding achievement in bringing this championship to Toledo, Ohio. Our thanks to you. Sincere thanks on behalf of all of us. Chris. Thank you, Mayor. Yes. And Chris, what you. would you like to say to the rest of the country about Toledo? Well, this is actually probably, this is a very emotional moment for me to be honored with the city of Toledo. And as a player, now coming back as a coach, it truly is, without a doubt, a dream come true. And this isn't just our, it just isn't our cup, Toledo. It's, it's Toledo's cup. And I want everyone to enjoy it. And if you can find us, you can find the cup. You can all enjoy having a sip from it. And trust me, I think I've had a few too many sips from it these last couple of days. <laughs> Chris, compare this year to last year when you had the best record in the league but fell short in the playoffs. Well, we felt a little bitter naturally, but for some reason, our office staff, along with all 17 players and any players returning from last year, we just had this sense of sense of destiny that we knew we were going to be around when it came down to the to the big time. And this is the big time right now. And you coached the team differently this year, didn't you? I think you learned a lesson last year a little bit. A little bit. We made sure our team was a little healthier and didn't crack the whip down the stretch because you don't get any cups for winning the regular season at least any of that count but this is now a, a cup that really counts and no one can ever take it away from us this is now ours and 1993 is going to be my finest year congratulations thank you <laughs> thank you yes congratulations <laughs> okay all right chris mcsurley and uh i think we've no he what power he has as soon as he walked over here it stopped raining and the sun came back out so and now I think uh, you got your hair all ringed out from the other night. I'll go ring mine out from the rain. And uh, Melissa will send things uh, back to you. This is Dave Carlson, Dan Cummins, broadcasting live from Government Center. All right. Thanks, Dave. An exciting day in downtown Toledo. We'll be back. Stay with us. And take Storm Day. Our Bill Weggy was on hand as the hockey team made its way through the streets of downtown for a victory parade. The Wade High School marching band led the way down Summit Street. And as people heard the band playing, they came out to see the Riley Cup champions the Toledo Storm hockey team. The players rode through the streets of downtown to the cheers of the Storm faithful as they cruised to the government center where hundreds of fans were waiting. When we were coming down the road there and turned the corner, I saw the people, I was, just, I was so thrilled, I just couldn't believe it. It kind of got you a little wet there for a moment or two, but then clear, the sun came out. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> storm report there. You gotta got get a little rain in there. That's why we're called the storm. It's great, you know, it's great these people come down during the middle of the day like this, you know, and support us even, you know, even out here in the street, so it's awesome. I don't know if we can top it next year, but it's been a yes, great year in 1993. And again, our congratulations to you for a fine, fine season. Here it is, the proclamation. It is, in fact, Storm Day, USA, yeah! in Toledo. <laughs> hey, how about that? What an honor. What a, what a tremendous honor that, to be recognized by the city for, for, uh, for a job well done. And Obviously, there's nothing more I can do this year, but I just don't want to hear anything about next year yet. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's savor this one right now. Well, after last year, I was really happy. Great success, 46 wins. I didn't think it could be beaten after an expansion year. I was wrong. This is great. And the way we won it was just fantastic. From downtown Toledo, Bill Leggy, 13 Sports.
And the Toledo Storm's next big moment comes next month when they receive their ECHL championship rings. Ready from a sojourn <laughs> to the Sunshine State and back to uh, enjoy a storm. A big one. I guess. Yeah, a lot of people showing up for the storm, too. You figure it out. People showing up for a storm? They did. It was a scene that Toledo ones haven't experienced since the Gold Diggers won the title about 10 years ago. The storm began just two years ago, and already they have a title to brag about. This was the scene this morning as the victory parade made its way down Summit Street, and then along Jackson, and ending up at the government building. Fans lined the entire parade route, and the players enjoyed every single shining moment. Good, yeah! It's the greatest feeling I've uh, had in a while. It's great, great for the city of Toledo. And it's great. You know, all the fans support we had all year, and especially in the playoffs, and all the people you can just talk about all the people out here right now. This is phenomenal. And the one cloud in the sky stormed on us <laughs> through the parade, so we were happy for it. Did you ever think a goal scored by you would mean so much? No, never. I've never scored an overtime goal before in my life, so I'm glad that that particular goal was was the first overtime goal I scored. Just a great sense of relief, and it was the initial sense of relief, and now it's a, truly a sense of gratification. I'm just appreciating everything, everything that's happened this year. All right, let's do it again next year. The NHL this morning, Money Tips at 6.30 a.m. As the play comes in the near corner now, Tisdale. Takes a bit of a dive as Al Roberts now will carry it out. As Toledo comes on a three on two. Duncan, Roberts, and Hicks. Duncan, back to Roberts now. Duncan, out and top. Easy, scores! 